What a great day to be alive on this Shabbat. And you are grants us nation so much of his abundance. The simplicity of Torah truth to reveal the essence above all his identity. It has nothing to do with us and who we are. Our concept of the matter, our ideology, what we think, he doesn't care. It's like a parent telling the child, I'll take care of you. I don't care what you think. Your judgment, your opinion means nothing to me. It will not determine what I said. I have said it. That's it. And it's settled period. His Torah is forever settled in the Hashemayim, the heavens above. We see that in his creation. That is one thing that is so consistent, his creation. He placed the Shemesh, the sun, that it rises in the east and it sets in the west. It is never delayed. It is always on time, so is his Torah. Nothing delays it. Our biggest obstacle is that it has not been opened unto us. And the reason that is so because there is not an infatuation. The Torah changes one. Change our outlook. It changes our appearance. We are the light of the earth. We're the light. We're the salt that has the fragrance and the beauty of the great taste and delight of what Torah express. We are the light of the earth. We're just like a city sitting upon a hill. And so when there is dimness in the city because there is no light, there is no light of Torah. We're not being guided by Torah. We're being guided by a spirit. It is the spirit of man. It is not the Ruach. Everything that has Ruach, Barach, yeah. We have no power of that life in us. We must become genuine. And get real because one day I know and I understand as far as life is going to exit this body. Don't worry, I will teach. I went out on the second day of the week to meet the person that does our taxes here. Our conversation was very brief, a few moments. I certainly did not want him to travel this far because... And the price he charges us, it is just, it's beyond comprehension. He's excellent at his craft. He's always looking to help us as to what he can do to generate. You say, I do it all the time. Well, I don't want to proceed in that route. So our conversation was limited. That was Monday. He goes home. And uh, I began to get these telephone calls. I don't answer the cell phone. I'm just not a cell enthusiast. I don't use the telephone much. I just don't do it. It's momentarily, and that's it. <clears throat> so I began to get these calls. I would not answer. I knew who it was. It was my natural sister. Wednesday morning before we were up, she was calling. I said, Raphael, who is that? So she told me, I said, this woman, what does she want? Because I generally, when she called, I'll return her call after about two or three weeks a month. Sometimes I don't return. I'm just being honest. <clears throat> and so after breakfast on Wednesday, I said, let me see what this woman wants. You see, this woman has never declared that she knows Yah. She has never walked in Torah, and she has never inspired to be one that love Yah. The ones that you love have, and they're phony as they come. And so I called 
I called her. I said, what do you want? Just like that. And so the same natural brother that I met the other day, he went home Monday night. He addressed his wife. He said she had a cold. She was coughing. So he gave her some cough medicine. And then they talked. And she lay down. And from his diagnosis, she was having a gentle sleep. Everything was well. So he gets in bed around 3 a.m. that morning, Wednesday morning. He tells me he gets up to go to work. She's still in bed. She's lying there. He was glad that she was asleep. She was comforted. And he says to me, we have this little ritual that these are the words we say to each other every morning. We greet each other this way. We embrace. And then he said, when I spoke to her, there was no response. So he said, well, in his assuming that uh, she's sleeping well, so I'm not going to disturb her. I'm going to go over and give her a kiss. And when he went to give her a kiss, she was as cold as the weather is around here. She dropped dead in the middle of that evening. I'm saying that to say this to us, you think you're going to evade it, but you're wrong. Even when a song like that goes up, everything that has ruach, and we, we do not have the, the energy for young, because we don't have the ruach of young. She can never come back and make atonement for her ways. There was no time to consider to get it right or to make sure she's right. And so it is with you today. We have allowed some of the same kinds of sins to separate us from the body of Hamashiach because our eyes have not been opened. I'm going to deal with a few things today, Mama. We agree because we delight in our own folly. Sickness is rapid among us. We have no will to live. Oh, mama, you don't give up until the last breath you live. I can't afford to die. And so I want to dress my heart, dress my mind in the healing balm of Gilead. When a man is whole, he doesn't need a physician. It is his Rafa that restores his nation and him. And so the strength of the Gerber warrior when his leg is dislodged, cut off, he strives to complete the course. We're not a nation that do that. We're not a nation that assists and help one another. We're some of the most damnable, secretive people in the world. You know something that's going to help me, and then you will hold it to your bosom. You're wicked as hell. I don't give a damn who you are. I don't care who you are. You're wicked. You're a child of hell. I was showing the old man before we came over, an old man. I discussed it with Akshimri. This old man, 70 years old, he looks like he's 25. He said he had a disgruntled marriage at 42. He began to look deep into his heart to see what medicine would restore him, and it did. This is just from a physical application. And you say that people will say to him, well, when you get my age, you'll look like me. He said, well, I'm already 70, and they are ashamed. We make every excuse there is. We know what everything I know. I said to my issue or the other, I said, irregardless to my ignorance, my immaturity, my ways, I am one that labored that we may have the abundance of Yah's peri. I get up every day to check on the greenhouse. That's my first priority because I know we need all of those ceilings in the greenhouse. I know that. 
And I know we need to be healthy. And we must live. We have no faith. Because we have not the power of the Ruach. It is something missing from us. I want to read this before I teach today. Concerning the words that Yaakov's Kala, Kala, K H A W L A W, Kala. It is when the body, the mind, has become so emaciated and so sick and so diseased that only death can deliver it. Only death. The mind becomes so diseased and so filled with death. Only in the pala, the prayer of the Sadiq, shall make whole. And we are a nation of people because we don't know what Torah says. We don't understand words. Why? Because uh, we got the elderly women that are silly and sitting on their ass and doing nothing. We got the old men that are immature and they are so robust about things that are so immaterial they have no meaning to life at all. Has no essence. You got the elderly ones cannot listen to a damn thing because they know. I was telling all the Achim, I looked at us all on the first day we were over there spreading wood. One said that I eat right. I said no, not only you don't eat right, no one eats right. Because when we eat the word of Yah right, when we eat food right, it heals us. It restores our body. It makes us look healthy. I said to that old man, that old man eats right. You can look at him until he eats right. And Shimra said, man, something. I said, you know, this old man is purely natural. He doesn't take drugs. That's what it said. Just purely natural. And so we're not eating the Torah. We're not eating the bread, the lechem. Right. And so when sickness invades us, we become fearful of death. We're worrying about dying. Because we're drawn under the captivity of our own sins. And that's why we worry and we're afraid of death. And we're afraid to die. We're afraid to deal with that. And so what a man, a wise man, when he makes a statement, you look at him, it reflects what he is. Yeah. Our power was out the other night, and there were a group, two groups that came, and one group I began to talk to. So the man, he walks away, well, I don't want to hear that. I say, now see, look at you. You can't handle what I say. So you must have a defensive mode. You think you're wise? Sure I am, because I have received the correction. And the rebuke. I receive it from any man. But we have to be careful how we judge a shafat. I'll get to that. We have to be careful. But this khala, the sickness, this disease in mind that produce nothing. And our bodies, that is not the epitome of your strength of nutrient values of wisdom, knowledge, we have the power to abstain. We have the knowledge to know what is best that we may cause uh, our nefesh, our being, uh, that the Torah calls uh, 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 to humble ourselves by fasting and denying our flesh. We don't give a damn. And so it is a, not a process of purging our bodies that they may produce health. We're filled with drugs and everything, but not with the Torah of Yah. And so as our Zakain, he wasn't feeling well, I said to him, it's not a sickness unto death. You'll be all right. Our oxymion is not that. I want to read something. I will not tell you where it's at, because you all tend to read and tend to add and tend to look down when you can't even look at what was said. That's what you tend to do. And that's why you lose perspective. That's why you lose focus so easy. This is not a storybook. I will read one of the most profound utterance of what the Torah calls Naba. Not Nobi, but Naba. One that utters by the influential power of the wisdom of Torah, 
by the living breath of Yah. It is the influence of Yah's mind in that man when he speaks. It is the power of Yah's uh, dwelling, uh, power in that body when one speaks. Now who spoke more profoundly than the one we call Daniel Yah? Very profoundly, didn't he? Wise man. He spoke uh, not by the prophecies, by the influences of Yah with great measure. That men still ponder today. And the reason we ponder, and the reason we ponder, and the reason we don't understand the exact, because we always want to accreditate some man. We don't want to give credit unto Yah that his mind is much more exponentially powerful uh, and resounding than our mind. And so men are challenging each other to see who has or who have the proper knowledge of the matter. And they all are ignorant. When a man has that, you see it in his life. You see it in the power of his poneum. You see a perfect flow. You don't see this damnable, ignorant look you see on the faces of most men. I'm very definitive and to defend. I've never defended me. I've always been able to listen to those that I charge as having more wisdom to me than me. And I will listen. But everybody got wisdom. Everybody knows what everyone else knows. You don't know what I know. Can I read this statement here? It says that it came. Let me read this. It talks about this one by the name of Daniel Yah. Where is this? Eight. Here it is. Daniel Yah says with this great revelation of this, he calls it Gala. Gala is when Yah begins to re reveal unto us by prophecy his great depth, his great measure, that we may have the chukmah, the wisdom, to administer that, that when others hear, they may learn. And I'll show you an example of that too, all right? It says here in the book, and Daniel, yeah, he says, I nearly, and I was faint. I was only, I was poor in my ruach without measure of strength. He says, and I was chala. I was sick. 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 Anytime there is a measure among this house, I go to the Torah and see what the Torah says on this matter. He says, I was diseased not only in my mind, my body. He was so consumed that he nearly fainted. He nearly lost his perspective. And that's what we do. We lose the, me the measure of Amun, the confidence and the trust of Almighty Yom. He said, I was sick certain days. And after those days were over, he said, afterwards, I rose up. I rose up and I did the king's business. I did the milak business. I did the business that was before me. He said, I was faint and sick. I had no resolve, no power to press on. I had no ability to go beyond even my physical nature because it would not allow me. I was bedridden. I was on the bed. He did not say anything about he was going to die. Yeah. This is a generation that is ill-equipped. We're so damn arrogant we think we're equipped for everything. We are ill-equipped. We try to answer every man instead of being quiet. I don't try to answer every man. Men say things to me, I said, I'll let you talk on that. And you will begin to find the disbogulated uh, mixture of uh, ignorance and stupidity, uh, misconception of Torah, and they have homogenized this, uh, this folly in their minds to believe it's truth. The Torah is precise. It's easy to understand. If he uses something that is wretched and ignorant as I am, you tell me you that believe you're bright and smart, then it will be seen in your countenance. It will be seen in your presence. In your presence, oh yeah, that's where I belong. It will be over one day. Yes, it will. It needs to be over today. Our attitude. One of the most important things that is missing from our hearts 
is that the power of Torah has not been opened unto us. We are betrayers of Yah. We're easily offended as to what he commands us. So many are offended at what I say and the way I say it. And so many think highly of themselves, but they never esteem others. You don't ever hear them say that what a beautiful Ach he is. What a beautiful Achot she is. You don't hear that. I've never had a man to come to me. I will have them to come to me and challenge me. What well, I got, what you got. I've never had one to say, I just don't see it the way you see it. Few old men say, I like the way you talk, preacher. You bring out the elements. I don't say that to boast. Like no other man. I don't hear them talking like you. I know what's out there. And I know what they're saying. They know of us here. Where they simply do not want to fellowship with us here. I get an offering the other day from Missouri right down there. That group that once I knew. And they all need somewhere to go. I was talking to one in Atlanta. I'm not going to send anyone to those that are unfaithful and I won't do that. I'll tell them to listen. There are two individuals there. I think both offering just as they came from Missouri. One from Missouri. I think they both came from Missouri. One from St. Louis. And the other one in a little small town below St. Louis. See, they don't even know each other. They don't. This is one thing I appreciate the heart of an individual. It's not what one sends. I can almost tell exactly what every offering is before offering, opening it. I'm not being funny. It's just the truth. We give all to Yah. We give Him everything. I said to Yah, I have some teachings on these past few days. This no, I put together at least five messages. And they're all dynamic. Well, you say that. Well, I know they are. Because I knew, and I know what kind of time I spent. Because I could kick my heels up, I could throw my, uh, my uh, keyboard on my lap, and I searched the book and searched up definitives and definitions. And so they're very powerful messages. I don't know if I ever preach it. One I will teach, because it's vital. When the Torah relegate 50 chapters to one thing, then I must teach that. Well, how do you know it's not murder chapters? Because uh, I don't lay on my duff. Now we're about some cotton candy, a steak and eggs. Torah says this, Yoshua makes a profound statement. I'm going to tell you what these verses are, I just want you to listen to them. When he appeared unto those that say that they loved him. Now he's appearing unto us today. We have all, Yisrael, gone to our own ways in this past week. Now he makes himself known. How is that? He is the living Torah. He is the Torah. He is the Dabarim. He is the promise of Yah. He is the word of Yah. And so in this past week, we have all gone to do our own thing. Do what we thought was important. He was not a part of our progress or our process. He was far removed. He was out of our mind. So it was with the Talmudim, and we are the Talmudim, the disciple ones, those that are disciplined by the order of Torah, by living Torah. It says in the book of Lucas, even when they saw him, they were just terrified and frightened. That's the way we are. When the word of Yahweh, when Yahshua revealed himself unto us, uh, when he reveals himself unto us, we become despondent. We don't like it. We get angry. We get mad. Uh, we show our resistance unto Yah. There's only way you're going to know Him and understand the power of our Hamashiach. It is by the revelation, the gala, the exposure, the interpretation, the, the revealing of the living Torah. Whereby the testimony, the air, do the power of that testimony is so alive in you that men may see the light of that testimony and they may honor Yah because of you. We look dead. We look lifeless 
Mean as a rattlesnake. That's how we look. I shall. So disinserted. No compassion, no caring. And so they're all sitting there doing their own thing. Just like we are. Our minds are pondering our own activities and what we want to do. Has nothing to do with what the will of Yah, the pleasure of Yah. We're not searching the Torah to understand his will and his great pleasure. We're not trying to draw light unto him. So when he found them, they were frightened. And he began to a dialogue with them. First of all, he said, these are the words which I, am, I uttered, I spoke by the command of Yah, whom I am and what I am. He says, which I spoke unto you. Uh, what words did he speak? He spoke only one thing. He spoke Torah. Yeah. I will prove it. He said, while I was yet with you, uh, he let them know that everything I said, uh, he says that all things must be, it must be accomplished. It must be finished. It must be done. It must reveal the truth of whom I am. He said all the things that were said, which were written, first of all, Lucas, listen, 2444. He said all the things that were written in the Torah, he put the Torah first. Everything that was written in the Torah of Moshe. He said everything that was written by the Navim or the prophets, the messengers of Yah. He says, and also in Tehillim, or Tehillim, in the Psalms concerning me. He said, that must be made known unto you. Everything. Knowing their lack and their inability to understand, it says then, when he said those words, then he opened, he, he began to open unto them their, first of all, their tavun, the intellectual understanding of how to understand scripture, how to read line upon line, precept upon precept. He opened up their tavun, tavun. When you find an intelligent man, you know he's an intel intelligent man doesn't have to prove he's intelligent. Intelligent man began to talk, you will know he's intelligent. Even though that man did what he did, other night, I was talking in simple uh, terminology. Then all of a sudden he began to listen because he knew that he had something. You know what? Because he asked me, where are you from? I said, well, my friend, I was born here. Just like that. In South Carolina. You from here? Yes. Why did I do that? So, so take the weight off of him. He knew that this man was speaking differently than I. His command was different than mine. So I gave him the comfort to let him know I'm a southern boy. How about that? I was a country boy. That's all I is. How about that? And then when I did that, I could sense the whole attitude change. I could. If I had said, well, I'm from New York City. Well, you know, New York boy. Give me a little more clouds. Makes me a little more renowned. We're nothing but the dirt of the earth, Yisrael. Our composition is dirt. We're going back to the dirt of the earth. That's a fact. Hallelujah. Then Yorkshire began to open. He began to open their understanding, their taboo. That they may have insight of Torah. We need that, Yisrael. We need men with definitely wisdom and insight of Torah. There's a sure sign when a man has that. There's a revelation in the countenance of that man when he has that. He opened up their taboon, their intelligence, their insight into the knowledge of Torah, the wisdom to, of the applications of Torah. Or what Torah says. But the Navi and the prophets utters. 
and the sweetness of the Psalms, of the Tehillim, of Davids, the writing and the purpose that we have over 5,000 songs that we can sing. You don't ever have to write a song. I've been saying that for years. You go to that book, you never have to write a song. They're all written for you. You just put some music to it. Hallelujah. Why did he have to open up their taboon? That they may understand the relevance of knowledge. It says here that they might understand. And that's where he uses the word shekhel or bina. Be, that they may have the prudence, the wisdom, the ability to understand the construct, the effect, and the effect of the power of Torah. Then he opened their understanding to what? To the kitzve ha chadosh. He opened their understanding to the scripture. He opened their understanding to scripture. He opened their understanding to scripture. That's why it's a sweet thing, a beautiful thing to see the rise of the sun. That's why he doesn't want to lay on our ass in bed all day. Because the sun is its constant, so is the Torah of Yah. He opened up their understanding to Chitve. What? Did he open up their understanding to? How did he show Shochat? To reveal in their hearts and their minds the very power of Torah. It all had been spoken. He has spoken it because he is Torah. Yes. He is the message of the prophets. Yes. He is the sweet sounding songs of David. Yes. For he came in the volume of the book. Let no one pervert you. Uh, and say you don't need your shoe, how much you there? Damn liars. The liars. I said I want to go kind of slow and ease today, but we'll see. He opened up their understanding, the intelligence, the knowledge to Torah. He opened up their shekhen, their bino, that they can discern and know and have wisdom to understand a scripture. He opened up their understanding to scripture. I want you to hear this now. He opened up their understanding to what? To scripture? How is it that we as a nation of Yah, as a people, we must understand what scripture says? And here is a prof profound pronouncing here in the book of Gileana. We're going to maintain this opening up the scripture and what scripture says and what scriptures he opened up. What he opened up. What did he? Revelation chapter 19, hear this in verse 10. Yochahan said, when the messenger, the Melach of Yah, presented himself unto me, he said, I fell to my feet to worship, to Shacha, to worship him. And he said to me, no, sir. No, sir. Don't even try that. See that you do that not. Why? Just like Shaul said in the healing. He says, for I am your fellow servant. He says, I am your Yisraelites, Achim, your brothers. What? Listen, now this is vital. This is what scripture, that's why he had to open up the scripture to them. For what? There's only one reason he had to open up scripture to them. Can I tell you? It's here in this book. Here it is right here. And we have, we have the Eduth, the testimony of Yeshua Hamashiach. He had to open that book up, scriptures, that they may understand the power of this testimony. And that's the reason that we lack and we lack so far behind uh, because it has been not opened up. We don't have the testimony of Yahshua Shua, because when we got that, listen, and we worship Yah, we worship, we shakha. Lift every voice and sing till the heavens on earth rings out. We lift our voices. We lift our hands. We worship, we shachaya in ruach, in ruach and in Torah, definitive. 
We have the testimony of Yeshua. He had opened up. The only way you're going to understand the testimony of the power of Yeshua, you must begin in the Torah. And you must understand how the prophets exercise the power of that wisdom. And then you can see how it maturates in the very beautiful songs and the singing of David. And we can see the same thread throughout Torah, the book, the Sefer, the writing of Yah's great testimony. When one has the testimony of Yahshua, they worship Yah because they understand the dynamics. They understand the power of that testimony. We're not dead. We should not be dead in the trespasses uh, of our sins. Yeah. We should do just what the Torah says. Make a joyful noise uh, unto your all ye land. Uh, and we make that kind of a noise. Yeah. We do what Yah commands us. We hear what He commands us. Uh, we worship Yah. We obey Yah. It's a delight to obey Him. Uh, listen up. Uh, he said, for this is important here. This is the catalyst here for the testimony of Yahshua is the ruach, the spirit, a prophecy of Naba. That is the testimony. That is the ruach. You will never understand prophecy without the ruach of Yahshua HaMashiach. For it is the power of that, that's where you got men, they will talk to me, well, you know the weather's changing, I will say bullshit thing, that has nothing to do with the end time. The weather changes, it rains and it doesn't rain, and men think because they can talk, well, you found something on the internet, something that someone wrote, uh, and the degrees of the changing of the, uh, of the elements. Uh, the earthquakes, where, how many, when there's an earthquake, everybody knows where the earthquake is. Uh, we must have the testimony of Yahshua. That's why he had to open our eyes to what scripture says of him. And our eyes must be opened unto what scripture says of him. Because we don't give a damn and we don't appreciate him. That's why we can continue in our folly and our ignorance and our distaste and our dissatisfaction. Without any shame or any thought of consequences. What shall be brought upon us. We must have the testimony of Yahshua. It must be embedded in our bosom because uh, the power of that testimony, it is the Ruach, it is the spirit. Uh, you can never have Naba. So that's why you got men speaking of their own hearts. That's why you got men speaking of their own hearts. So that's what the Zachanim and the elders, uh, they began uh, and the women prophesied and they spoke uh, of the great magnitude uh, what well, the prophecy of Naba mean that they stood before us to preach? No, they would sing the songs of the greatness of God. That's what Miriam did. She took the timbrel and the, the Torah says she began to Naba. She began to sing. No, she didn't write no words down. She began to sing of the power of Yah, of the beauty of Yah, of the coming of his Hamashiach. That's what she did. That is the Naba of the woman. Same thing with the Simli, we're the woman, right? So we sing of the dynamics of the power of his great beauty and his strength. That's what we do. That's what Naba is. We're influenced by Yah the sweet. That's what David did, didn't he? Hey, we'd sing and he, he wrote so many psalms of the greatness of Yah and the beauty. But we are cold and so damn distant. I'm talking to Yah's house. We are stubborn, hard-headed, wicked people. Our heads are hard. We're callous. We're cold as hell. Why? Because of the iniquity. Our lying, sorrow, wicked, conniving ways. Because iniquity shall about the love of many. We're cold as hell. We're cold, man. I don't feel that for my babies. They're always sweet. That's why I like to hug them all. That last little clown was here. He said, you can tell it's mechanic. I know because you don't do that to your children. You don't know how to love them. That's why he said it's mechanic. It's genuine when they come up. It's genuine. That's why I tell you, I go to no babies. They eventually come to me. I don't go to them. I will not cater to them. They come. They will come. They look and stand back. It's okay. I can look and stand back too. You walk away. I'm not offended because you walk away, little one. That is my Emma, that is the spirit. I will read that again. He says, For the testimony of Yahshua is. Do y'all hear that? 
He opened up the scripture to them. He opened up the Torah. He opened up the Navi'im, the prophets and the message of the prophets. He opened up the wisdom of Dairi that he could sing like that and write with such influence of great power. power. Why? Because he knew of the coming Mashiach. He said that the testimony of Yahshua is the Ruach of prophecy. It is Naba. It is the power whereby you know you have the influence of the Ruach. You have the breath of Yah. It's not these lies that we've been so accustomed to. Uh, we've grown up in the dirty whole houses and been a part of. I have. I didn't let these strange men lay hand on me. I didn't allow them. They would look at me. They would wonder. That's what they would do. They would just look at him. They would look. That's how they would look. I've seen it. I've seen the charlatans and the liars. And I never wanted to be like them. I never. Mark a perfect man. Mark him. Follow him. As he pursued Torah. I don't follow no man. You silly little boy. You don't even. You're not even a man. That's what you are. You follow the writings of Shaul. Was he a man? I follow everything you said, Shaul. If you were alive, I would follow you today. I would, I, would, I would do your work. I would wash your feet. I'd make sure your wood is cut. I'd make sure you got wood at the house. I would do that for you, Shaul. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sick unto death, I would do it. Yeah. There's nothing greater than love. Yeah. There's nothing more greater than yeah. genuine love. Yeah. There's nothing greater. Because that is Yah. Nothing greater. Nothing. It cannot be sensitized that it becomes polluted and diluted one's one own senses. It's greater than that. Yes. It overshadows the sensitivity of sensor, your sensitive nature. It's greater than that. Yeah. It's greater than that. It's beyond the, the purpose of ex express superlatives the way you explain. Well, yeah, no, I love it. No, no, it's beyond that. It is the faithfulness of commitment. Yah so loved us. That he was committed. When one loves someone, they're committed. When you truly love Yisra'ya, you're committed. When you love Yisra'ya, you're committed. You're truly committed. You will suffer for the sake of the nation. You're truly committed. It's beyond a commitment. It brings great delight and great joy. You tell me your parents loving your babies when you don't see them. Uh, and even the silly ways it makes your heart happy and fat. Sure it does. We don't know what love is. Without the testimony of Yahshua, that's why he had to open up the scriptures. See, that's why the scriptures are there, or the kit vecha chodash. It's there to, to develop. That's why he opened up their taboo, the ability to read and understand. Therefore, we can't even hardly read. How are you going to understand? You don't need to try to read five or six verses. You need to read one verse uh, and try to understand that one verse. Uh, you don't try to read a chapter. You will never develop the power of the air do the testimony of Yahshua. And you think because your ability to read, uh, if you understand, I, I will show you in scripture, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. We think we, we will walk because of the volume of what we think you know. Can I, can I show us what the book says? Oh, yeah. I show what he opened their eyes up to, all right? Hallelujah. Yeah. Listen to this, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. Yeah. The very wisdom of Shirak, he speaks to us. How he shows us how we gain the knowledge and the wisdom of prophecy of the Naba. That we know that this is the influence of Yah speaking by this man. That comes from the voice of this woman because she sings that it captivates you. That she doesn't need a song to sing. You just began to play and she began to sing. I can sing a thousand songs with her ever writing and never for remember the words I sing. And sing them all differently too. But look what the wisdom of this messenger Shirak says. He says, uh, this is only one way how the knowledge of prophecy, how it is gained, how you secure it, how you procure it. He tells us, he says, on, on the other hand, he says, he who devotes. Now, we devote it. Do you understand what a devotion is or what one is devoted? There is nothing that stops that 
process every day. When you're devoted, come hell or high water, as the old folks will say, nothing stops you. So you must be devoted. You must be de It's like a student study to become a doctor. They don't go out to the parties. They don't go out to the social event. He has no girlfriend. She has no boyfriend. Because they are devoted. Because they are devoted. He's not thinking about money. Money is not the objectivity of the study. He knows that if he accomplishes the acquired task, money will not. That would be the smallest of the matter. It is something that is greater than money. There are, there are doctors that are genuinely doctors because uh, they have a great affection for what we call, quote, humankind. Uh, and they want to do that. Uh. And they uphold the Hippocratic Oath. Uh, and they don't prescribe all these drugs, uh, especially in the days when we have what we call the general practitioners. Uh. They were not paid by the pharmaceutical uh, 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 magnets of conglomerates. So one was devoted. When a wife is devoted to her, House, her house is clean and spotless. Her children, when a man is devoted to his wife, his presence make her smile. Just his presence make her delight. I don't give a damn if you don't love me. You're not going to go too many places on the internet and hear this today. That's a fact. Chirac says this. On the other hand, when everything is said and everything is done, he say he who devotes himself to the study, to the study of Torah, to the lahag, to the inspiration, to the driven motive, that one's inspiration, that he that devotes, there's a time, no make time, it is his time, yes. to Torah Hallelujah. of the Most High. He says, we'll seek out the wisdom of those that are the zakhin in the ancients, and he will be concerned with prophecy. See, I know we all think that. Well, I understand prophecy. You don't understand a damn thing. You don't even know what prophecy is. When a man devotes himself to Torah, when nothing is on his mind but Torah, then it says this, he shall, he shall seek out the wisdom of the ancient. That's what he does. He seeks out the wisdom of the ancient. Ah, oh, that gets us quiet, doesn't it? Uh huh. That shows you what we are. He will seek out the wisdom of the ancient. Those that have a tremendous experience with Yah, Yeshaya, Obadiah, he will seek out the wisdom of those that are ancient, way before our time. He will seek out the wisdom of the ancient, and when that man, he will be concerned with one thing. It says here. And when it says, uh, and we'll be concerned with prophecies. Oh, everybody thinks that they're concerned with prophecy. Everybody knows what prophecy is. Of. Sure they do. But when that man devotes his time to Yah, he will be concerned about prophecy. Why? Because Yahshua did not, I read in Revelation that, for the testimony of Yahshua is the Ruach of prophecy. Is not the testimony of Yahshua the Ruach of prophecy so that man knows that he has a profound testimony in him that's why he devotes himself to Torah and that's why he concerned with prophecy and there are men that read a chapter tonight and go to bed and they think they understand it is better to read one verse and I do it all the time it is better to read one verse I, I can show you how I do it I've shown the Achim there those I show them how I do it and I will define every word to understand because I'm not that bright. You don't know a damn thing. You don't understand. That's why your talk is of no substance. It's not going to cause one to have great conviction. We should, every time a messenger speaks, we should be convicted. I don't care if he talks about love. I don't care what he talks about. It should be a conviction of our sins. And see how we've done. Yeah. Hallelujah. He will be concerned with prophecy well how do we get to that state and how do we understand prophecy unless we understand what scripture says and the wisdom of scripture can I show you an example it's found in the book of Daniel yeah listen to it in the book of Daniel Daniel chapter 10 listen it says the messenger we know that Gabriel is always positioned as the messenger Melach 
unto Israel. And Micaiah, he is the one that stands, he fights for the nation. Great Milak. They're so great that they are called the Ach, they are superior to all the other Melachi. It's amazing that Yah has a superior order in all of his creation. Even in the jungle, he has the king of the jungle and all that. Among men, there is no one that is greater than me. And that's so silly. There's no one more beautiful than me. It's so stupid. It's foolish. There are men that are greater than me. Much more knowledgeable than me. Much more inspiring than me. I may not ever meet him, but I meet him in the kingdom. But there are men that have such profound wisdom of Torah. And when you see those men, they walk and they strive with such assurance and such, uh, and such beauty in their life and their walk. You will know that these are strong men. I see men in the natural that I marvel at. I like their character. I like their disposition. I see natural men that I like. When I see a man like this, how are you doing, man? I don't mind. I'm not afraid to speak to other men. How are you doing, sir? Is everything all right? Yes, I am. How are you today, my friend? Excellent. I have no complaints at all. Of course, I'm alive. And I tend to animate like that. Of course, I'm alive. Well, that's so. Uh, that's beautiful, my friend. Uh, how are you doing? Fine. Excellent. My name is John Smith. Oh, my name is David. How are you, sir? I even do like that. Bow and humble myself. You're just not around me because I don't hang out. I don't like to hang out. So maybe one day I go on a trip with you. How about that? Can I show us something here? It says in the book of Daniel, yeah, as the Melach, as Gabriel speaks on to, to Daniel concerning the vision, concerning the great Harun, the wisdom of the vision of Yah. Then said he to me, he says, wherefore you have prayed and inquired of Yah. He says, I come to you. And then he tells him, and now I must return to fight the prince of Para, of Persia. I must go and fight. He says, and when I leave you, you of this vast luxury and great estate, that's what Para is. He said, then I have to go and fight those that are of, he said, and the prince of uh, Yavon or Greek or Greece. We see this prince uh, with his Jesus talk and the transformation of Torah and to change it uh, and all of this jive folly that we have been taught. He said, you got to fight. That's what. Gabriel fights against uh, this insurgent of these lies that we've been taught that we cannot eradicate them from our minds uh, and distance ourselves from them. Uh, it's amazing. See, most men will never look at that because they're wise. See, you, you, they, well, you see, he was fighting against the prince of Para, Persia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how they talk. But what, what revelation is that? That is of no re re relevance because he fought with the prince. What does Para, what does the prince of Persia mean? That they can have a little... A Webster dictionary, they're not going to look it up because they want to prove themselves. We must prove Yah. We prove Him by our lifestyles and our love above all things. Hear how you know you love Him, that we have loved one toward each other. You will know how kind you are to Him, how kind you are to me. You will know how you appreciate Him, how you appreciate one another. He says, but I will show you that which is noted or Rasham recorded. Now Daniel Yah needed the understanding of the vision. 21 days he prayed, he fasted. Said the Melach, Gabriel, he said, I'm here with it. Listen to this now, hear this. He says, but I will show you that which is noted. That's Daniel Yah, isn't it? He said, which is noted in the scripture. Well, what scripture was it before Daniel? Yeah. He didn't have the writings of all the Nabi'in. He had the writings of David. He had the Torah. That's what it says in Daniel yeah, 10, 21. He said, I'm here to show you the prophecy, the wisdom of what is written in scripture. That's what it says in Daniel 21, 10, 21. He said, I will show you what is noted in Skit Veha Chodash. What is written in the scripture of truth. What is truth? It's Torah. 
He said, I will show you the prophecy. It's always been there. You cannot understand the dynamics and the power of prophecy. Unless you understand the pikuts, the statues. Unless you understand the chukmah, the wisdom of God. You don't get that. That's why he opened up the taboon to understand language, to understand how to read, to understand how to grasp things. We can't grasp a damn thing, Israel. Yeah. So folks get mad at me because I, he talks like that. We can't grasp it. Yeah. He got to open up. First thing a mother does, she began to open up the intelligence of a child. I looked at the headline today. I didn't read the story. It says the more complex reading the more developed the mind of the child becomes. So your mamas ought to read that scripture all the time to your babies. You don't read no fictitious line love novels and all that bullshit. Yeah. You read to read the Kitve because that is a complex book. Hallelujah. That is a complex book. Read it and try to pronounce the names of the literature. We go there, okay? Very complex book. You read it to your baby, you read it to your children because of the more, see, this is what man knows. The more complexity the book is, the mind of the child developed to understand uh, and, to, uh, and to attach to those things. If you read to them like a third grader, they'll read like a third grader. If you read to them like they're in the, in the zero grade, they will think like a zero grade. If you act, you talk like someone that has no damn wisdom, that's the way they're going to talk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what Gabriel said. He did not say, I will show you something in a vision. He said, every vision you've had, it is written in the book. You understand? Daniel, yeah, I give you that one, Zachin, or right out there, Davis. Don't mess with me today. He says, but I will show you that which is noted or Rasham recorded. Recorded. That's which is noted. When you note something, you record it, don't you? You've never heard someone, I'll note that then. Note that down. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that, rocket scientist. That's why he had to open up that taboon, the intellectual, the intelligence, the ability to perceive and understand. By reading, you've got to understand how to read the scripture first. If you don't know how to read the scripture, how are you going to understand, Israel? Yeah? Yeah. That's why you don't understand. That's why you read to promote you and you don't promote him. He said, I will show you what is written, noted in the scripture truth. And this is what he says to Daniel. Yeah. And there is none that stand with me in these things. None. He says, but Mikael, he's the only one. That's what gave it. He said, I don't need nobody else. He said, when I fight against this prince of Grecian, when I go, okay, see what he got to get through this luxurious, luxurious lie that we are placing in our minds and we believe. That's what this whole dynamics of this battle was. He had to fight with the prince of Para. Because Para means luxury and indulgence. That's what Persian was. Persian rugs. And all. When you hear rugs, you don't know anything else. You know a Persian rug. That's the best rug. Huh? Huh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Then he says, and then when I fight against him in your generation, he said, then the prince of Grisha. A Yavam. And now we're dealing with the prince of Grisha now. So when a man devotes himself to Torah, he understands prophecy. And that he speaks prophecy among the nation of Yah's people. And the people understand prophecy. And when they understand prophecy, they understand the spirit of the Ruach of Yeshua HaMashiach. And then the power of that testimony becomes more pronounced and more profound. We should have someone to talk to me like this when I was young. You all's age. Spiritually. I wish I had. I wish there were all the men around that could break it down like this. I haven't found many in my days. I'm just being honest. I don't criticize them because I learn from I don't care who I don't care who gets up here. I don't care even when the babies talk to me. I said that this is the ones you praying for a million inches of snow. I said the other day. And Mr. Snowman back then, he loved snow. So what about the snow? You ready for it to go? <laughs> yeah, I want to get on the trampoline and dig in the dirt now. It's, it's time I said, Siri, are you ready for the snow to go? She says, yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How do I know he's ready for it? Because he, he and, and that bonehead was in, in, in the dining hall yesterday. Why not? If you love snow so much, just get out there and feel and run. Huh? 
And so Zakei Mahali, I say, huh? Huh? Oh, you saw on that foot, on that garment, his footsteps coming across there. I looked this morning, I said, boy, that's his footsteps there. In that field. That's all you saw. So if they like snow so much, come on, Sarah. It's, she comes in my house, oh, it's so cold. I said, you, you, you still want that million inches of snow, baby girl? I don't want it. Uh-uh. I don't even want the three and a half we got plus. Too much. I just, it was nice that little frosting we got. They, we can throw a few snowballs. I could bounce their heads in a little snow. And I, okay. Ah, uh, next day so it's gone. Ah, nice. <laughs> Man must devote himself to Torah to understand prophecy. There must be a devotion. You must devote. There's a loyalness there. You must be loyal. When a man devotes himself to Torah, it cleans him up every day and it gives him a new outlook. Come on, daughters of Tizayon. It gives you a new outlook, a new, new, new understanding of things. You see life differently every day because you become wiser. He said, there's none that stand with me in these things as far as guarding the scripture. Mikayah, he will fight for scripture. He's the one that guards the mind of Yisrael. He says, but Mikayah, he calls him your prince. He is a prince. There's a prince of the power there, but he's the prince of all prince. He fights. All right, Micaiah, Elo, Micaiah. He fights for the nation. He said, there's no other one that stands with me. We must guard this testimony. We must guard the message of Gabriel. He brings the message of truth. He's the one that dispenses. He is the Melak that Yah sends to say, take that to that preacher down. I know he's a country boy. Take it to him. There in South Africa. Then Russia takes the, take that word to him. He doesn't get up and say, well, you know, y'all spoke to me. He speaks with great utterance. He's devoted to Torah and he sees it. And this is what Yah speaks. He opened up their understanding that they may understand. They may have the shekhen, they may have the wisdom to understand the application of Torah. When a man is wise, when a man understands I was talking to Ach Yaakov when he was here. Ach Yaakov, he, he deals with people from all over the world. He was telling me one day, he said, I was talking to one man, he was from Sweden, one from here. He may be on telecommunication, he may sit there in his home, or he's in a hotel, he got telecommunication. He got someone in India, he may have someone in China, maybe someone in Japan, someone in Sweden, someone in Germany, but he is the chief man. So he's conversating with all of them. And he told me of a story, he says, uh, everyone just want to show their expertise. I mean, he, he's a type, oh, okay, Uncle, he's a very quiet man. He doesn't talk much. I like that. He says to me, even when I don't understand what you say, I know it's the truth. And then down the road, Yah always reveals it. I can see it better. He says, so everybody is just talking, trying to show what they know. And I believe he said, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he said, uh, the man from Sweden says, uh, well, then why don't you, uh, this is the man, this is the one we come to listen to. Well, uh, let's listen to him. He said, I didn't say nothing. I just let him talk. I just let him talk. Because he says this to me. He said, you know why I let them talk? He said, because they take care of business for me. And I know they know what they're doing. You understand you think that they would have him over them if he, he wasn't a wise man? He's a student of his craft. Yeah. He's a wise man. And so when the Swedish man said that, then Achia Akobi got to break it down. Come on, he doesn't talk with any high polish, uh, polluting vocabulary. Just simple, wasn't it? And I know when he finished, they all just looked at him and said, Man, boy, how'd you get that? Spirit of Yahshua, the testimony. If we don't have that testimony of the power of Yahshua, you have no knowledge of prophecy. Yeah. And you will know you have the testimony of Yahshua because you, every word that Yah gives unto you, you keep it. You don't lose nothing with your attitude, your spirit, your, your dysfunctional disposition. You don't lose nothing. You love the house of Yisrael. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's what you need. This is one thing I want to read this quickly. We need to understand. We need this revelation of understanding. And we need this testimony for, for purpose to know. Can I tell us what we need? The testimony of Yeshua. 
because we can never understand the great power of the Shemesh Sun and Yah's creation. And we can understand Yah's creation. We have confidence in life and death because we know of his power. Just like he told Yahshua, get up. He got up. Death cannot hold him. The grave cannot hold him up. Nothing. That's why we need devoted mad. We're devoted to eat. We're devoted to sleep. Hell, we'll run up a mountain to get something to eat. Let's get real. Our favorite cream pie. Don't make me talk like that. I want some cream banana pie. I'm thinking of something. I haven't had made my pie yet. The one I've told you all I wanted. Now the cheese cream and all, cream and all of that. I haven't made it yet. One day I'm going to make it. You understand? I don't want no. I don't want no nutty buddies and no ice cream sandwich. I want. I, I want something that got calories. And when I finish eating it, I know I had me something right. I don't want nothing that's full of air. I want something that lays it on. That I can feel guilty when I'm finished. And I want to eat the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look at what Shao says unto Ephesians, the great gathering of Yah's people. We cannot understand the greatness of Yah without the testimony of Yahshua. That's why people today are denying Yahshua. You got those that call themselves Hebrews, Israelites, they're liars. You can never understand the dynamics of Yah's great work without the testimony of Yahshua. Shaul gives us, he speaks unto us here in Ephesus. He says in Ephesians, hear this in chapter 1, he said that Yah our, he says that Almighty Yahweh, the Abba of our master Yahshua HaMashiach, he is the Abba of Tefirath of great splendor. That he may give unto us all the Ruach, the Ruach of Chuchma, uh, of wisdom, uh, and also of Gala, the revelation, uh, where? In the knowledge, uh, in the knowledge of him, the Da'at, the power to discern, uh, the revelation of his power. Come on, man, explain that. A body of clay, a body out of an earthen womb, and it went down to death. It cannot be explained in the annals of man, his medical uh, practices. He cannot explain that. You will never understand that unless you understand Torah. The Torah is a light. And light calls life. Light calls life. He says, for one purpose, he said that the eyes or the ayin, the intelligence, Iron is one's intelligence, one's spiritual, one's charisma and knowledge. He says that the eyes of your understanding, of your taboon, of your knowledge, understanding of the purpose of Kitve, scripture, the importance, the value of it. That's why you devote to it. When you don't understand the importance of it, you don't devote to it. When a husband is not important to the wife, she's not devoted. When a wife is not important to the husband, she's not devoted. When a woman doesn't give a damn about her children, she's not devoted. When a daddy doesn't care about her children, he's not devoted. When a man lost his job, he's devoted. He never misses a day. He's never late. There are people 25, 30 years never miss a day from work. Never late. There are mothers that are so devoted to their children in every regard. There are fathers that are so devoted. The fathers that are so devoted that they take time with their children every day. I don't care what their circumstances is, circumstances may be, what they are. He takes time with his children. Their mothers, uh, even throughout all of their chaotic day, will take times, uh, time with their children and, and instruct them in the beauty of wisdom. Yeah. It is not by just some kind of form of reading and writing type of bull crap. It's your damn life, woman. It's your life, man. Yeah. They got to see that that exemplary character of what you Think you know in your activities and your actions. It doesn't mean anything. You, you're a hypocrite. Oh, I love y'all's people. You're a liar, woman. You don't even know how to love you. You're not even honest with you, man. He says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, or the awe of the light shines. Why? For what reason? That we may know as a nation. See, this is what we don't know. What is the tikva? That we may know what is the tikva of his calling. That we may know, not hope, but the tikva. What we can expect, we can wait. It's coming. Hoping it doesn't come. But the tikva. That we may understand what we, the reason for our great anticipation, the reason for our devotion and our faithfulness um, of his calling. Uh, 
And what is the riches of his great honor to Firatha, in who in the inheritance of all the Israelite Kirushim. Hear this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? To who? To us. We must understand that. It's only in the testimony of Yeshua. What is the exceeding of the greatness of his power to us? What who? Who believe? Who trust? Who bought duck? Who has confidence? Who trusts Yah? Who wait on him? Who's devoted? Who wait at his feet? Who cry at the feet of Yah? Who believe? Who believe what? According. According. You believe because of the great work, according to the working of his power in Yahshua HaMashiach. You have this testimony and you believe, Yisrael. In life you believe. In death you are sure to. That's why your devotion to him, our lives are like a vapor smoke today. They're gone tomorrow. You lived a lot of years. But it's still a vapor. I was talking to my Zakane the other night. I said, Zakane, 10 years, I will be an older man. I'll be an old man. I don't care what you say. I'll be an old man. I must live. For now. I must live. I could preach every day. Take away from him preaching. Zakane, better be all of you all. I want to make sure this is infused in their minds. No, I want to talk, I want to preach the same way I preach. Yeah. Follow me, Shaul says, as I follow. Yeah. Sure, how much? I want to talk yeah. like me. Yeah. I want everyone to be devoted to Torah and search the key faith. Yeah. 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 I will, my friend, Toda. Yeah. See, when we understand the exceeding great power of Yah, then he says, if we understand that, we will know those powers which he worked in Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. How do I know that? When he raised him from the dead. Yeah. See, that's what we need to know. Yeah. We don't know that, Yisrael. That he raised him from the dead and set him on his own right hand in the heavenly places. He placed him far above principalities and powers and might, dominions and every name. That is name. His name is above the name of Jesus and God and Baal is above that. And above every name, not only in this world, not only in this Olam. So he lets us know that there's a world, but also that which is to come. There's a world to come that is beyond our ability to understand without the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. And we must understand the scripture must be open unto us. Oh men, you must labor for the scripture to be opened up. If you start, I'd rather mind stand before me and talk 10 minutes and say something that is so profound that it stays with me than to talk an hour and you forgot what he was saying. Because it becomes so dispopulated, it is not essential to the fact of what he's trying to establish. All right, you talk to me five minutes to give me essence and substance. And stand before me two hours. You began to pollute that what you said five minutes ago, that it has no relevance, has no intent, has no purpose at all. I need it not two hours. You don't, have a, you, you don't have enough to say in one hour, let alone 15 minutes. Hallelujah. Well, you go for two hours. I've got something to say. You can't say it like me. No, you can't. You're boasting now. I make my boast in your shoe. Hear this. See, he has put all things on his feet and gave him to be head of all to the congregation. See, your shoe is the head of the congregation, of the ochen, the house, his bayat, his gathering. What does that tell me? He tells us which the congregation is his body. We're the body of Yahshua. And by being the body of Yahshua, he tells us our purpose. As it was with Yahshua. Who? For he is the complete of the fullness, the complete extension of Almighty Yahweh that fill all and all. We are the complete extension of Yah. He has filled us all with all that he has. He has given us the greatest of the riches of his knowledge, his Torah. He fills us all. He put all in Yahshua. 
And in that all in Yahshua, he puts that all in us. So he gives us all in all. Call and call out. That's why a man, when he understands the all that Yah's grant, he will be devoted to Torah. He must be devoted to Torah. That's what he had to open up their minds to Torah. They had read, they had understood the letter, but they did not understand the power of the Ruach of Torah. That's why they continued to fall. That's why they turned against him. And we must understand that. Hallelujah. I want to give us a few insights, what we must understand. I'm not going to be much longer. I'm tired. Hallelujah. I want to read this to us. I'm not a pretender. And I'm not false. I had quite a few messages I could have told. But then, Yah doesn't talk to me like men say he talked to them. They're words that's utter in my deepness of my heart. And so the other day, doing all this shoveling and all this, you know, and the words just, and he opened up. And so I began to search and say, isn't that amazing? Isn't that? And so I just began to study last night, this morning, because I just had to get a portion of all the studying I did, which is nothing, which is nothing. So you pour out this so that that young man, he will take it to a greater depth and a greater wisdom. I said to my Zakane, you don't, you don't have the time that I've had because I've had all these years. Your time is not like my time. You know, man, you old man, you don't have the time that you once had. You can continue to act like a jackass all you want to. And you can be a strong man. You come into the presence of Yisra, yeah, it's your presence that will cause great delight. Why? Because you are such a testimony. And you will know you're in the presence of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. That's what we need. The Torah is light, isn't it? It's not the sunlight, that big thing we see out there. It's not that light. Can you look at it? Can you look at it? And just, just look at that in which you open eyes you cannot. Just like Moshe, he, he, was, he, is the, he is the dispenser of Torah, wasn't he? When he came down off the mountain, they couldn't look at his face. Why? Because that's what Torah is. That's what this reminds us of Torah. This thing that we call Shemesh, the sun, it reminds us of the power of Torah. Hell, that's why we don't ever look up. Yeah. One of the greatest producers of vitamin E for us that we can get. That's why we don't like, to, like the sun. We don't we have to stay in the house. We got to stay cool. Yeah. Got to stay cool. Mama got there all day and fish, 100 degrees. Get out of that sun. Put on that little straw hat. She'll work the many cotton fields and corn fields and pick them, not collards, but collard greens and all of that stuff. I know it's right. And dirty hands and scraping in. And then when she wanted to take a bath, she had to walk down to the creek and get some water and draw it from the well. And no hot water. Talk to me. That's all right. See, these young ones, they don't know how to appreciate that. I don't care if it's your grand young, it's your grandchildren, your great grand, they don't know how to appreciate that. And they will disqualify you because, you know, I will never do that, old woman. They'll disqualify. You don't understand. Hell, she knows more than they all collectively together. They will never experience what she's experienced. She didn't have the things that pollute her mind and mess her up and make all crazy as hell like they do. Appreciate you. Amen. That's right. Yah began to move the ancient one to us. I want to give us this here. I'm somewhat close from here. Zakin would always say, somewhat. I want to read. I'm reading out of one book, Shirak. It's not some kind of sequential pattern here. But when scriptures is open, when the Kidve Akhodash is open, it produced an excellence. And when those men left Yahshua, nothing, they all gave up their lives. We don't give up a damn thing. We don't give up even our own sin, our hatred, our dislike and our distaste. 
I was in the bathroom this morning trimming my mustache up a little bit. I said, yeah, what a vile, what a wicked, damned of a twisted man. And yet, because of him, it's not about my works that I've done. He has made, he has justified us. He has made us right. He said, there's Sadiq. And I can be honest with myself like that. You may not, but I can be honest with me like that. I'm honest with me like that. I'm honest with me like that. I, I am honest with me like that. Because I understand the great chassid, the great kindness of Yah. So the messenger, the great wisdom of Shirat speaks. And I want you to understand that when Yahshua opened up their tabun, he opened up their understanding that they may understand. He opened up their intellectual their knowledge of what knowledge is, that they may understand a shakhel, or they may have the prudence of wisdom to understand what scripture says. Now we need to understand that. Shurai gives us a great understanding of the wisdom of scripture. He says to us, do not go against. What we began here. He commands us his Torah. He says, do not go to the Torah. Do not go to the laws of your own mind, of your own wickedness. He said, do not go to the Torah against a shafat, against the messenger, against the judge. Don't go to the Torah because you're displeased with what Moshe said and what Obadiah said. He says, for the decision will favor the judge because of his standings with Almighty Yah. You can go to the book and you can go and get your little group and say, well, Rayak this and Rayak that. You know, he said that and he threw that at me. Sure, I threw it. I didn't throw it at you. I spoke it to you. Yeah. You don't go. That's one thing I learned as a young boy. You don't go against the man that stands before you and judge you in the ways of Yah because Yah has ordained that man. Yah has. How do I know he did that? Because Yahshua, before he descended, he descended. He did not give gifts unto men. He gave gifts unto men. Hallelujah. He gave them an order that they may bring about the perfect wisdom of Scripture to man. So we, are, we, we, we do that. We want to go to the Torah and try to show what he is wrong. I'm not wrong in what I'm saying. Because what I say is too simple for you to understand. You look for something that is so dynamic that you think is dynamic that no one can explain but you to show you know something. That's what men do. See what I read last night? So you're trying to show that you got something so dynamic uh, that no one will understand. Uh, no, what Yahshua did when that testimony was revealed to me, he opened up my taboon. Uh, he opened up my intelligence, my ability to understand, my ability to cipher and to search not with books uh, and the writings of books, but out of the book. That's what he did for me. That's what he did for me. That's what y'all did for me. So don't go to the Torah. That's what Yahshua, that's what he opened up their minds to. Why? Because before he left, uh, who is the greatest among us? Uh, who will sit on your right hand? Uh, well, I'm more just than him. Uh, so you don't do that, Yisrael. You don't go to the Torah against the, the messenger of Yah because it's going to favor him. He asked this question, who is worthy of honor? Who is worthy of honor? Who is worthy of kabuts? Who is worthy of that degree of great regard and Great esteem. Who is worthy of honor? He said, first of all, they that fear Yah are sure seed. Those that fear Yah, they are sure zira. They are sure. They are sure seed. He says, and they that love him is an honorable plant. How do you know you love Yah? How do you know you have a great love for almighty Yahweh? Because you keep his commandments. For man said he loves Yah. You love your neighbors, you love yourself. You're kind and you're affectionate to your neighbor as you are to yourself, Yisrael. He says, who is unworthy of honor? Who you don't even honor? He said, they that regard not the Torah. He said, they are the dishonorable seed. When you find those that do not keep the mitzvah of Yah, they say, you don't have to keep the Shabbat. His name has no relevance. to Yah says that they are dishonorable seed. I don't care who it is. What the Quran says is dishonorable. What the Talmud said is a dishonorable seed. What Confucius says is dishonorable. That was not in the Ark of the Covenant of Yisrael. It was the writing of the Dabarim, the promises of the Torah of Yah. He said, and they that transgress the commandments, they are a deceivable seed. They are corrupt seed, those that willingly defy the commandments. Yah said that they are deceived. 
He has blinded their eyes because they will not receive the truth. This is the seed that is the son of God. So he opened their eyes to that. You can't say you love me now and you don't keep what Torah says. You must understand what Torah says. He says the man that Yare, that fears Yah, will do this. This is what he will do. When a man fears Yah, he will do this. He says, this is what he will do now. And he who holds the Torah will obtain the wisdom of the magnificent power of Torah. When a man has wisdom, when a man fears Yah, he will do this. He will, first of all, he will esteem the Torah above all things. He will hold the Torah to his bosom. And he says, and when that man, he will, he will ascertain the hukmah, the wisdom of Yah. He will speak with wisdom. His walk is one that is wise. When he talks, he is wise. When he, when he speaks to the mass of, of the congregation, he is wise. His words are so impactful. They have great strength. When a man, when a man fears Yah, when a man understands the fear of Yah, he's not afraid of the faces of the people and this immature generation. You're not doing a damn thing for me. That's who. When you find men that fear Yah, when you find men that truly fear Yah, you will find wise men. And you want to hear what they say. You will want to hear what they say. You want them to speak. When they don't fear Yah, I don't want them to talk to me. Just be quiet, man. Just watch and learn. Listen and learn. That's what you do. Listen and learn. Watch. I don't want you talking to me. I don't want you trying to instruct me. For a man has that great fear, Shirak says it is all wisdom. When a man has the fear of Yah, it is all wisdom. And in all wisdom, when a man has all wisdom, he tells us of the performance of that man. He said in all wisdom is the performance of scripture, of Torah, and knowledge and the knowledge of his omnipresence is omni-ability. When a man is wise, when he fears Yah, he has all wisdom. And you know he has all wisdom because in all wisdom, in all wisdom, it is the performance of Torah. It is the performance of scripture. It is the performance of Keith Veya. When a man has that, it's not his verbiage, it's how he walks and he talks. Man can't rule the house of Yah unless his house is ruled well. He must be in charge of his home. Not just the house of his children and his wife, but this bed. He must be in charge of this bed here. He must be. He doesn't try to build a reputation because his actions speak of his reputation. He doesn't need anyone to marvel at him because he is a marvel. He is a beautiful thing. Even the world marvel. Even the wicked, they don't know what this man consists of. We are great people. We are so gula. We are royal priests. We are the priests. We are the ones that this man has been talking about. We are the ones that administer the offerings of Yah. And there must be a lever or a brazen lever there. We must wash ourselves. Hell, we don't wash our damn filthy selves. So one thing about the Kohan, he had to wash himself every time for the hands and feet. And then the Day of Atonement, he had to wash his whole body. Hallelujah. So we must wash and cleanse ourselves. By the Dham, the blood, the living word, the Torah of Yah. And that's why we get up and we wash our hands. And we wash our feet in the Torah. That's what we do. That our feet are prepared and guarded in Torah. Order my steps in your Torah, O Yah. We don't lay our hands suddenly on no one. That's what we need to get. Uh, we may wipe our face off in the morning. That's most mornings. That's what I do. I don't like to bathe. If I don't have to bathe, I would never bathe. Oh, you're there. Oh, stop it, silly man, silly woman. I'm cleaner than you when it comes to hygiene. That you can bank on. I love hygiene. Because like I said, if I don't have to bathe, I wouldn't bathe. I wouldn't sleep. I wouldn't brush my teeth. Such a waste of time for me. It's a fact of the matter, Mama. I would not do it. No, he, he's dirty. He stinks. Well, you never smelt me then. How about that? I would never do it. Never comb my hair or nothing. 
I say to your friend, Sid Messiah, I say, did you come here this morning? He said, no, sir. I say, it looks like it. It's all right to me, no boy. I don't blame you. I very seldom call mine. That's just the truth. I don't. That's not the first thing I do in the morning. I get a brush of my teeth. No, that's the last thing I do. Man, what a waste of time. Last thing I do, man. Brush my teeth. I don't brush. No, no. I don't brush it. I don't brush it. Last thing I do, brush my teeth. Last thing. You're so dirty. Oh, stop it. We're the nation of Israel. This is what Yah says. See, daughters and sons, it's not how much you know. It's how you apply. You say, come on. Hear this, everyone. I tell you what this one is. It's in Shirak 19.24. Hear this. He that has small, little, mi'at, just a little bit of understanding. See, it doesn't have to be great. But if a man had just a scintilla of understanding, couple, that he fears Yah, it's better, it's better, it's better than him that has much wisdom. Man that has just a little bit of understanding. This old man always tell me, I don't know much, but I, I know what I know. I know this. And he was talking about how I want to be clean, and I want to be right. I want my heart right. I don't give a damn what he did yesterday or the day before. But I believe that. He said, I want to get it right. I want to be right with Yah. So if a man has just a little bit small, unintelligent understanding, but he fears Yah, he can discern the true messenger of Yah. He discern those that love Yah. He understand the beauty of those that are strong in Hamashiach. He said, that man, that man is better than one that has a multitude, a rob, a great, plethora of wisdom because that man that has a small amount of wisdom he will not transgress the Torah of the Most High and the one that has great wisdom and great understanding and pronounce who they are and they transgress the Torah they're not worth a damn but a man see we have we have promoted ourselves in this folly to think that if we know a lot uh, that we got a lot no you can know a little uh, and you use it right uh, and then you got a lot he reminded us better is the little of the Sadiq man uh, than the much of the wicked. So that's what we're always comparing. Uh, I got it. I know it. No. I'd rather have little and fear ya than to have much and despise my ark and to allow anger to rest in my bosom against my chutz. I'd rather have little wisdom and little understanding, but it's real in me. There's a fear of Yah that to know how to speak every language in the world uh, and yet have no fear of Yah. And I defy the Shabbat. Uh, I defy what Torah says. Uh, so a man that has little, a daughter that can't hardly read and write but understand uh, when she hears that she fears Yah, she has more than a Jezebel uh, that thinks she is wise. And we promote this flesh. We better stop it. We better promote Yah. Live that a righteous man has is greater than all the riches of the wicked. See, that's what man does. I'd rather have your little, my ark. My stumbling linguistics can't even speak a proper sentence with the form of the grammatics using the exact of the seven parts of the speech of the English vernacular, and have that little, and have that little, and have that little, and fear, and honor, and don't go to the Torah on the judge because uh, the Torah is going to speak in regard for the judge. You understand? It's greater than all the wise men. Greater than all the men that think that they're wise and they gather themselves uh, in their feast of lies uh, and think they possess something. So great is the man that has a little, just a little bit, not much. Aza is nothing, yeah. Aza don't has a thing. And those that boast in their pontification of what they possess. See, that's what he taught them. Well, I'm greater than you. No, 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 no. Don't worry about who's the greatest. 
There's only one pure form of greatness. One that serves. That's the only purest form of greatness. To serve. You're sure who's greater than him. And he served the whole house, didn't he? That's the great man. That's the great man. When I get up there and talk like you now, you can't talk like me. You get up and talk, that's all right. You can't talk like me. Yeah. You're boasting. No, 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 no. You're the one boasting. That's why you're saying get up and talk like me. So you're boasting. You're boasting in yourself. I'm telling you. No, you cannot. You cannot, my friend. You just cannot. And don't make me go that way because we'll go in the areas where I will split you open. I don't like doing that. And they're those that I will kill. They're those men that I try to bust their heart. And then when I began to extrapolate, they don't know how to handle me. I began to talk. Ain't nothing they can do. You ain't, ain't not nothing they can do. I don't like doing that to men. I like a man that is simple and honest and pure. He says, oh man, first we come out the office, he says, I know I'm a you know. Uh, I was telling him about the death of my natural brother's father. He said, you know, I just, he said, I ain't fearing nothing because I know I got to go that way. I'm not worrying about it. I'm not thinking about it. But I want, I want to be right. I want to get myself right now. I don't want to wait till tomorrow. I'm going to do it now. I'm not going to take away from his loyalness to me. He's been loyal. He never disrespected me. Never challenged me. Never. First time he met me, I said, shut your mouth, you wicked child of hell. Sit down. I had to do that to him, Mama. Yeah, I'm going to tell the doctor. Yeah, I'm going to testify that. So he's going. I'm trying to tell somebody. I said, look, old man. I, want I said, look, my friend. You don't shut your mouth. No, you're not coming here with that. He didn't rise up. I said, man, I, I'm already, I'll cap you. Man. He didn't say that. He just looked at me. He didn't fight me. I said, no, no, no. You don't understand. You're speaking from a mind that is so demented, so twisted, and so far from Yah. And mine's with that way, too. Isn't that amazing? You like the pot calling the kettle black. But he stayed with me and said, Yeah, help that young man. He needs some help. I don't know, but I know he doesn't know. Maybe one day you'll bring it to fruition. And he's doing that. He's never talked back, never tried to tell me, Well, hold up, hold up. How can I but be faithful to him? He's never done that to me. I can't say that about every man and those that have been with me. Even when I was wrong with him, he would cry. I was in his house and I rebuked him up and down, said, I'll never come to your house again. He dropped like a baby. I said, I would never enter the doors of your house, man. You understand? Well, I've told men that I've never done it again. I mean that. When I said, I won't come into your house, I will never come in your house. I meant that. I meant it. I meant it. I meant that. And he broke like a baby. See, we don't, want to, we don't want to esteem that. We don't think, well, he, no, that's a beauty. See, wife, that's a beauty in a man. Well, you don't understand. No, no, you don't understand you. Well, Rayak, you don't. No, 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 you don't understand you, woman. How in hell you can understand me and you don't understand you? Let's get real. Yes, said hell. I'll close here. A few more scriptures. I want to read this quickly. God, can I read that? He that has small understanding and fear Yah is better than one that has much rab, rabba, a great amount of wisdom. But that man transgressed the Torah of the Most High. So it's better for you, ah, in your holding, just to hold on. Those on hold to Yah's hand, oh, the hand. Changing hands of ya, oh, you about a hole. See, I get you roused up now. Look at you back there. Oh, we about a hole to ya's hands. He doesn't change. He's the Almighty One, and He changed not. Therefore, the sons of your code will not consume. So, man that has little wisdom, he fears ya, and you see that beauty in him is greater than. If I think I have much wisdom, I know I'm an ignorant man. I know I'm unlearned. It, I didn't have to rehearse what I'm saying because I don't know what to say. I know that. Oh, you just said that. I say that because it's all honesty. I don't have to pontificate or promote to me. I promote him. All this is about him. We need the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach that our eyes and our wisdom, our eye may be open to Torah. And when our eyes open to Torah, it corrects us. 
It shows us our great need and our great transgression. He that has small understanding and fears Yah is better than he that has much wisdom. You just got a little bit. You just got a little bit. You may not can read as well as the next one. You got a little bit. But you fear Yah with that. And everyone will know you fear Yah by the profound wisdom that speaks. Even the little you know, it will speak from your countenance. Yeah. And this is vitally important right here as I read. He that guards or keep the Torah of Yah, he gets understanding thereof. And then when a man gets understanding, he control his thoughts. You see what Torah does? It controls our thoughts. It controls our thoughts. It controls our thoughts. When a man keeps the Torah, when he guards it, when he reads just that one little verse tonight, and he maintains it, he gets understanding of it. He has to set there. I'll never forget, my friend. I was there, Evangelist Hartsville was in, he was staying with us. And we had a little room we had, it was a beautiful room. It was a room I had put 10, 12 coats of paint over it, probably 15, you understand? 15 coats of paint on the wall. It was a dark blue. It was a blue. I had wallpaper that had a beautiful... I had fixed up a room just for him. No, I didn't just fix up anything for him. I fixed up a room. I had 10 or 15... I know 10 or 15 coats of paint over the wall. And the paint was so beautiful that it won't, It seemed like it would walk off the wall. No, when you want a beautiful house, you put the more coats of paint you put over the wall, it's going to create this great ambience. I read that 30 years ago. Because I would read things like that, home interior design and all that. And so I had this room, I know I put, and I took my time carefully, and beautiful carpet, beautiful wallpaper, I, I, wall, I did it all. Closet in it, so when he come, he would have a beautiful place and a nice bed, that I would have this messenger of Yah. I didn't know how ignorant I was because uh, I blessed the man. He would have a place to lay his head and sleep. And I walked in one morning, I knocked on the door, he was on his knees reading the book, and he had his finger just like this. Just come here, young brother. Read that. I was afraid because I knew I didn't. I had no wisdom like him. I didn't try to compare himself with, myself with him. Hey, what does it say? What does it mean? I was kind of reluctant, but I answered. He said, read it again. So that time, I'm, I'm leery, sure enough. I don't want to say nothing because I, I'm already a dummy. He said, read it again. He said, and when you read it this time, look at this word right here. And when he, he had his finger underneath, he had his fingernail underneath the word, just like that. He said, understand what this word means? I really didn't. And when he began to explain, he said, now, now, you understand now? And it was so clear. It was so clear. It was so clear. It was so clear in that application. See, just one scripture night. If you take that, what Shurak says, I told you where it was, Shurak 1924, and just ponder that. And you ponder each one of those words, small. I understand the depth of smallness. Everyone wants to be big. No one wants to be small. I was saying to my friend, he was telling me how he used the word entrepreneur. I say, it's just a false, false paradigm that had been taught in the minds of people. I say, it's not an entrepreneur, just a smaller proprietor. You got a little small, you got a storefront chicken fried fat back greasy spoon, and you're an entrepreneur. You're not an entrepreneur. You don't have billions and millions to invest. You have a, a diverse portfolio. You have a damn greasy fried chicken fat back collard greens little uh, proprietorship. That's all you have. What is an entrepreneur? They got money. They got millions. Uh, they have the power to divest and invest. Uh, and this is how the world play on our mind. You know one word I looked up? I began to study one word the other day because I'm sick of this fag talk. Well, uh, we're talking about one's sexual orientation. So I say, yeah, I'm sick of this. So I began to research the word orient orientation. I say, how these wicked dogs take that one word? Or oh, have definitions of it. I know what it means. You're too smart to, to look up something that simple because you know it all. See, I'm not that smart. I say, how these beasts take this word has nothing to do with sexual Hallelujah. He that keeps the Torah of Yah gets understanding, therefore he controls his thoughts. And perfection of the fear of Yah is wisdom. He that is not wise, he that is not wise will not be taught. So when you find a man that is not wise, you can't teach him a damn thing. Oh, no one true, no one wise like you. Huh? That's why Yahshua had to Tabon, open up. He had to open up their understanding. 
When a man is not wise, you can't teach him nothing. When you deal with a man that is unwise, you can't teach him nothing. He always wants to teach, but you can't teach him nothing. He that is not wise uh, will not be taught, uh, but there is wisdom um, which multiply bitterness. Uh, he has the ability to multiply his bitterness uh, and to speak and to go to the Torah to judge the messenger of Yah. He got words to say. He was speaking a little language to try to try to uh, insert something in others' mind uh, that they may speak against the messenger of Yah. I've been wrong. I'm not fearful of that. And then they become bitter. They get upset. I'm strong. Well, you're not strong, man. We're just playing that board. I look at all our bodies. We, we're not eating right. Stop it. That old man, I showed you that old man this morning. Did he look what he looked like? He put you to shame. I said, he puts me to shame. I said, old man motivated me. 70 years old. That's right. Hmm? Did he put me to shame? He put you to shame. Sure he did, man. No man is right. See, that's what that does. It multiplies bitterness among men. Well, you, I know what you know. I know how I can talk like you. I read, I was reading that, you know, <laughs> I read that last night. That's all you did was read it. You didn't get an understanding of what you're reading because if you did, you'd have been quiet. He that is why will not be taught, but there is a wisdom which multiply bitterness. Can I tell you something? You that seek, sure access the Torah, will be filled with it. You that seek, that vote to the knowledge of Torah, you'll be filled with the wisdom of Torah. He says, when he talks about a son if he says, but a hypocrite will be offended and stumble at it. A hypocrite, we are hypocrites when we're always trying to defend ourselves. If someone that's wise says something to you, you don't have to defend that, you just be quiet. I can discern whether you're doing right, I can discern whether you're exercising. Matter of exercising, no, you're not exercising every day. Man, I eat right every day. Hell no, you're eating cookies and everything else. You're not eating right. Because when we do that, it heals our mind. It heals us. We get so secretive, we don't want nobody to know that. Yeah, you're eating this way now, but you've got your cookies and your pies at home, man. Talk to me. I know I don't eat right. I eat simple. I eat the same thing every day. I've been on this. You messed me up. I've been on this. Your fault, because you told me to give it to me. I just love those. Brussels sprout. And I got some, but y'all, please let them Brussels sprout. I've been eating Brussels sprouts every day. I take it, that's right. And I dump it on my salad and put it all in one plate, in one pile, and I work down through that thing. I put it all in one plate. I don't have to separate no food. He, said, well, he wanted to challenge me. Well, and let me see, well, what are you talking about? You say you put it all in one plate. I say, man, this is what I do. Do I do it that way? I dump it all in one plate. I don't, I don't separate. I, I, just, I may put a little noodles down. I may put the salad down. I put the Brussels sprouts down. If I got a little few pieces of protein, I put that on top, and I just eat it. Eat down. It's like, more like a pie. You eat pies, don't you? Beef pot pies. They got everything in it. Not everything. Everything, don't you? Don't you eat the carrots and the potatoes? Talk to me. Yeah? All right. That's why I eat it. I don't separate no Beans here and this, there, and I just eat it all down. I just, I, I, I got one little bowl. It's got a little, what you call it, about that big. I start layering it from there. And I just put it all in there. That's how I eat. It's all going down. My brother taught me, he said, baby boy, it all goes the same way. But different than that. I got sweet potatoes. I put that on there and I mix all that. And that's how I eat it. Mm. That's how I eat it. Hallelujah. Let me close here, Yisrael. Jacqueline has been talking to us about the offerings, the Zabah, how we offer unto Yah. This is what, uh, this is the vital importance of prophecy. That's what we must understand. Shirak, he says this in Shirak 35.1. I got a few more I must read. And Yah's will, see I got more scriptures. Uh, Yah's will, I'll go back to this again. Shirak says that this, he who keeps the Torah makes many offerings. See, a man must keep the Torah to make an offering. See, a man can't lift up his hands, can't lift up his voices unless he keeps the Torah. See, he that keeps the Torah makes many offerings. 
We hear about the free will offering. It's his pleasure to offer unto Yah. So he makes many offerings. That's why we don't make the offerings. We're reminded by this uh, Zakin all the time, the offerings of praises and hallelujah, esteem Yah. He that keeps the Torah, he that guards the Torah, he makes many offerings. He lifts his hands, he praises Yah, he shouts, he dances. He makes many offerings, what it says. See, this is what you should open their minds to. You've got to offer not only that which you are commanded, but you must know it's a great pleasure to offer yourself and your life for him. Yeah. We're no more by our own. We've been bought with a price. Yeah. For me to live is your sure homage. For me to die, we have, the, we have the gain. We have the great rewards of Yah. Yeah. He said, he that keeps Torah makes many offerings. And he who heeds the mitzvah... He offers a shalom offering. He who, who, who takes heed to the mitzvah of Yah, they're always offering it. A shalom offering. Shalom, my acha. Shalom, achotza. Shalom, achim. Shalom, achim. That's what he does. He make many offerings. Because we don't regard the Torah, we don't make no offerings. Same thing with your, with your gifts and your offerings. Send an offering to their right. Send an offering to him. It costs money. We need part for our systems to stay on the line. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, yes. I think I'm going to stop at these last two. Hear this right here. It says, woe to you. It says, wicked men who forsake the Torah of the Most High. That's what they had done. He had to open up the power of Torah in him. That death and nothing can hold Torah. Nothing destroys it. It is an everlasting truth. When a man is a wicked man, he forsake the Torah of Almighty Yah. He says, for if that man even increases, gain the whole world, and loses his nephesh, he said, it shall be to his destruction. I don't care how much you gain, how much prestige, you're still coming down. You're going to go down. His commandments, Yah gave Moshe the commandments uh, to give unto Haran authority. And statutes and judgment for what? Listen now to teach Yaakov. Who is Yaakov? Your name should not more nobody be called supplanter, but Yisraya. Jacob. He says to teach Jacob, Yaakov, Yisraya, the twelve tribes. What? The testimonies. The testimonies of Yah. There's no one more profound than the testimony of prophecy. And to enlighten Yisraya with his Torah. That's what Yeshua had to do. To enlighten them with the Torah of Omar Yah. We must all establish this one thing. I'm going to close with this. Shaul speaks here in the book of Ma'aseth Shalishim. The book of Acts 7, 17. There are many men that quote this, but they're ignorant to its application. It says here that, And the Yisraelites, Achim, immediately sent away Shaul and Silas by night. To Bereach. And coming there to Bereach, they went into the tabernacle, the house of Yah, where there were Yahudim, those that were the true Yisraelites. He said, There were, these men were more noble, they were men with much more intelligence and much more tabon, their understanding was much more open than those of Thessalonica, Yah. And he said, now this is the most important thing, and they receive. Have we ever sat before Yah and we don't receive what he's speaking to us? We're guilty of that. We are guilty of that. That's inclusive. Oh, I will never do that. You're flat out liar. We have done that. They receive the word of Yah with all readiness, a mind of Laba. Their minds had, uh, had destroyed every element that would resist what Shaul Salah said uh, they receive with all readiness of mind. They remember what he said. Uh, we don't remember a damn thing. They remember what he said. Now you must understand uh, what did they search. It says, and then uh, with all readiness of mind, and they search uh, Kitve, they search the scripture, HaKodash uh, daily. Now do we do search the scripture daily? Here we search a channel for television. Talk to me. They search it daily. They searched it daily because they were so amazed at what was said. They had never heard it that way. Why is it that this man here speaks in a way that's different than what that man speaks or that man speaks? What they said was so profound that they said this can't be in that book. 
So they searched the scripture. They didn't have no concordance like I did. They, they said, I remember that word, but they had the readiness of mind. They did not allow their minds to leave that, to remember that, to remember that. They maintained it. They held it. They, they, they allowed that to course their thoughts. They did not lose it. They had a ready mind. They were ready. Their minds were made up. And they searched the scripture daily. They wanted to know, to see. This is too beautiful to say that the Torah talks that. And the Torah says that. They searched him for one thing, not to disprove those men, to see the enlightening of those things. That's why when I give us things and I give us scriptures, uh, you should take them and search the book. We don't do that. We don't do that. Very few, if few, do that. We want to add what we think should be there. And you don't know enough. But those men were so noble. They were such noble men. They searched that Torah. They said, let's find it. And they had to search it daily because the plethora of wisdom shall all and silence that. It was beyond the ability to uh, obtain it all. But they were so excited that the light of that testimony began to blossom. For what was the result? It says, they searched to see whether these things were so. And listen, even though they were indulged in the Sunday worship and the Jesus worship, look what happened. Therefore, many of them believed. See, we just got to believe. If we can just believe, all things are part. That's all we got to do, just believe. And many of them believe. Also, the honorable women, women of great renown, character, and personality. We need those kind of honorable women among us. We need that. He says, which were Greeks, which believed in Jesus and the Lord God, and of men not few. And then I want to read this last verse here. 1712. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Hallelujah. It says, <clears throat> Hallelujah. And then he goes on to say that um, he talks about when the Yahudim heard Shaul preaching and all of that which was aroused. That was one verse. I wanted to read. Here, where is that verse? Yeah. I know it's here. Hallelujah. Many of them immediately shall always to both the yards and steal and brought into Athens and Salah. But anyway, many of them believed. And many of them became very devoted unto that truth and to the testimony of Yahshua. We must have that testimony of Yahshua because you're going to never understand prophecy without that testimony you stand on. Without that testimony, you can't understand prophecy. I don't care what man says. I don't care how much you read. You need that testimony. You need the richness of that. And all of you that want to be scholars of Torah, when a man has little, me own. When he has just little understanding, your daughters have little, little understanding, and you fear the operation of Yah. It's greater than what one that thinks that he has a lot is greater than all that. If you just take that little bit of knowledge and hold on to that, and you just add a little bit more today and a little bit more tomorrow, you'll realize you have a great substance, and men will see your great works. When men don't see your great works, you don't have much. When men don't see your works and the power of Yah, you don't have a damn thing. That's just a fact of the matter. You can talk all you want to. Talk is cheap. It's not talk, it's the work. They will see the mitzvah, the works of Torah in you. You understand? They will see it all here. They will feel, see it in your physicality. They will see it in your walk. You can, go to, you can go to any city, you can tell a hustler when you see one. You go to the hood, you can tell a hustler. You can tell the ones that are making the money, you can tell the ones that are broke. You can tell the false hustlers and the pretenders, and you can tell the real dogs. Catch it. All right. So it is in the ways of Yah. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all in Yahshua's name. Let me just dismiss. All right. We want to make sure that you that have joined us, that the riches of Yah has befallen your house. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. And as Isaac Cain said, we shall shoot, we shall turn. In all things we do, Barak you are Abba in Yahshua's name. And the greatness of your beauty bless us all in strength and cause our hearts to rejoice in the fatness of your Torah. Bless all the little babies and keep them our Jaqinim and our Chochim. Keep all in Yahshua's name. Give us this blessed assurance this day. Show us the way that we must walk according to Torah. We may be wise men and women. Bless all those that have joined us, the homes, 
We told that you for every gift, every offering. Bless those, the hearts will be challenged to give, to strengthen the work, because you are there. So many things we need to keep the broadcast alive. We ask in your sure's name, let it be done. We appreciate all that you give. Bless those that have sent offerings on this week. Keep them and bless their homes, their lives. We told you for all things, bless Zahain as they travel the highway, our hearts as they go home. Bless them all in your sure's mighty name we ask. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.